And I'm here with Congressman Ken Buck, Republican of Colorado. You just came from the hearing. Before we get to that, you uh, announced some big news. You're leaving Congress at the end of next week. I am, yes. I'm, I'm resigning my seat and, and creating a vacancy um, in my district. Why? Well, everywhere I go in Colorado, Dan, I hear that people are not happy with Trump and they're not happy with Biden. And uh, I think we need to change our electoral, electoral laws here. Um, and I have a passion for that. And I'm going to leave and I'm going to find the right organization to join. And I'm going to start working on that issue. We have to have better candidates up and down the ballot, not just president, but Senate, House, uh, local offices. We've got to find better ways to elect candidates and bring America together. You already had announced that you were going to not run for re-election. Why leave now and leave a vacancy in an already very narrow majority for your party? Yeah, because it's it, to me it's important to get in the mix of this uh, election cycle and start talking about the issues that people recognize are, are such a problem right now. You know, uh, our uh, my colleague Melanie Zanona is reporting that uh, there is such tension among House Republicans that many of them aren't even going to a retreat that's going to happen at the end of this week. Is, is that tension part of why you're leaving so abruptly? I, I think this place is dysfunctional. For example, I am the, the number third ranking member of the Judiciary Committee. I haven't even asked my questions yet. Forty, fifty people have gone before me. But that, that could be personal. With, with well, all it, it could be personal, but, but, it, but a lot of this is personal. And that's the problem. Instead of having decorum, instead of uh, operating in a professional manner, this place has just evolved into this bickering and, and nonsense and not, not really doing the job for the American people. How much uh, of the fact that you are uh, leaving March 22nd, next Friday, how much does that have to do with uh, the fact that Trump is the presumptive nominee and you're not exactly a fan? Well, I don't think, uh, whether he was the nominee or not, um, I, I think our system is broken in, in how we choose candidates, and I want to get involved in that process. Is it really that miserable right now to be, I mean, from the outside in, it doesn't look that fun. From the inside in, is it that bad that you're saying... I'm done. It is the, the worst year of the nine years and three months that I've been in Congress. Um, and having talked to former members, it's the worst year in 40, 50 years uh, to be in Congress. But, but I'm leaving because I think there's a job to do out there that, that I want to go do. Anybody that you want to fill your seat? I, I have not gotten involved in that, and, and I'm going to stay out of it. And there's a primary in Colorado at the end of June? June 25th is the primary okay. election in Colorado, right? And that Okay. Uh, before I let you go and I toss back to my colleagues, uh, you, you mentioned that you haven't asked questions in here, but as a former federal prosecutor yourself, listening to what uh, Mr. Herr has said, do you feel comfortable with the fact that he decided not to press charges against the now president? Well, I have to tell you, uh, Dan, I think he is one of the most intelligent witnesses I've ever seen. He has an immense uh, uh, credibility and, and grasp uh, on the facts. Uh, I haven't seen the witnesses. I haven't heard the witnesses. I haven't read the underlying documents. I trust uh, Mr. Hur to have made the right decision. Anything else you want to add about your announcement, your big announcement? No, just goodbye. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Jake, back to you. All right, Congressman Ken Buck bidding adieu to Washington, D.C. Let's go uh, live to Lauren Fox now. She's live at the Capitol. And Lauren, uh, both Democrats and Republicans went into this hearing with definite strategies. Um, what are you hearing about how these partisans feel uh, their strategies are playing out? Yeah, I mean, both sides are extremely frustrated with her today. You're seeing that in the testimony. No one completely satisfied with that report. No one completely satisfied with his answers to questions. Republicans arguing that they feel like her did not move forward with the prosecution against Joe Biden and that his rationale for doing so was really checkered, messy. You heard that from Jim Jordan, the top Republican on the Judiciary Committee. Here's what he told me just a few moments ago. Congress and the American people should have access to the states. Her also suggested that there is a difference between Trump and Biden in the sense that Biden... The difference is Joe Biden kept classified information at about 
I forget how many, like nine different locations, because the Penn Bite Center moved like three times in D.C., so three locations there, his garage, his den, his office, upstairs, downstairs, and then at the University of Delaware, the library, and the University of Delaware Biden Center, so I, I don't know how many that is, in like nine different places. President Trump's, President Trump's uh, classified documents were kept at his home with Secret Service protection, by but the way. But in the report, her does point out that Biden turned that information That's over when he that, became aware of it versus the, Trump, who did what that. What he points out in the report is based on what Jack Smith has said, and we know we know that you know we know Jack Smith and what he's done in the past. So we'll see. I do got to get the votes. So I apologize. And you also are hearing from Democrats who are extremely frustrated about the focus about Biden's age and his ability to remember things. Multiple Democrats pressing her on why he had to include that information. The top Democrat on the Judiciary Committee, Jerry Nadler, telling me that it was superfluous and that he feels like her is acting as a Republican operator here. So it's really this unique moment on Capitol Hill where you have a witness who's frustrating both Republicans and Democrats. Democrats, Jake, no one completely satisfied. But as you noted, both sides clearly went in today with a very clear idea of how they wanted to tackle this moment. Jake. All right, Lauren Fox, thanks so much.